All right, so for the third video, I'm going to talk mostly about just how things are set up um, for WildMe in terms of Cypress and CircleCI. Um, so one thing I haven't mentioned in the previous video about CircleCI is that in addition to kicking off via API calls um, after IBIS is deployed and after the most recent version of WildBook is deployed, the former of which actually gets deployed every time someone pushes a change to the master branch of WildMe or of WildBook. CircleCI is also kicked off every time somebody pushes a commit to the Cypress, the WildMe Cypress uh, repo. Um, so I didn't mention that in the actual video last time. I just wanted to make sure that, that got covered in video somehow. Okay, so a lot of the stuff I wanted to talk about in this video I actually addressed accidentally in video one. Um, so specifically that each um, spec file addresses um, tests that have to do with one specific page of WildBook. And then within, so the other thing I wanted to mention is that within a certain spec file, you will you might have several different describes. So for this, for example, this one, um, which needs to be edited and updated, of course, but um, for this example, right, there's a, uh, a group of tests that have uh, a bunch of things created before each test is run, including creating and navigating to an encounter. And then uh, after each of these tests, that encounter is deleted. These are actually extremely time consuming, right? To do everything you need to do to create the encounter and then to go ahead and delete the encounter afterwards. Hopefully it makes sense that you don't necessarily want to run all tests within this this describe scenario with both of these lifecycle hooks. So it really is only tests that need to be completely isolated, need their own encounter, and then have that counter be destroyed at the end that would be in this kind of setting. Also, having tests that uh, need to be in extreme isolation, say they, they uh, need to be improved, right? They're broken, they're not working correctly. I kind of think about uh, these kinds of describes that have lots of, of state built up um, before each test is run as being sort of a quarantine or a hospital for tests that need to be improved. And then as they get improved, I'll take them out of the hospital and put them in less time-consuming describes um, that maybe only have a before lifecycle hook instead of a before each lifecycle hook, if that makes sense, uh, and see if they'll play well within that kind of uh, describe. If they don't play well, they stay in that, that extreme, uh, time-consuming, isolated describe. So that's the way I've been using describes, is some of them have like these complicated before eaches and after eaches, and some of them only set up state once in a before, and then run all the tests. Um, so I want to make sure that, there, that it's clear that there's a trade-off between isolating tests um, and making tests uh, less brittle right, by isolating them. And then also, if you isolate them, you make them less dependent on state buildup from previous tests. The trade-off is between that and having good speed, okay? I'm trying to make it as fast as it can be, while all the while putting my most brittle tests in these, like, uh, these isolated describes. So another sort of convention just going forward uh, there were some HTML elements in the DOMs that I've been working with that didn't have IDs for their particular elements. And if I wasn't really comfortable going in and adding IDs manually, which I did a few times into the Wildbook, which I couldn't do, for example, with Flukebook because I don't have access to, to Flukebook's repo um, or Flukebook's build. But um, where I didn't have access to the ID or name attribute, a helpful command for that might be sci.get and then chain that with dot contains and then some kind of known text or something like that. So that's how you would get um, a particular element. So for example, let's say you've got, I don't know, two header elements, neither of which are named or have a title. So something like this.
Okay. So the question is like if these don't have ID attributes, how do I get the second one without getting the first one? And the answer is I would just do something like this sci.get on h1. Okay, and that would actually capture both of those. So I would do contains maybe again. Okay, so that way I would know that I only have the second one. And then I would do things, right? Like should exist. Okay, so that would be my, my assertion there. Other really helpful commands that I have um, been using a lot just to save you the, the labor of trying to find these. So sci.get happens a lot. Um, sci.request. So you'll see a lot of sci requests which are HTTP requests in the custom commands. Here's one for example. Um, so you have to include parameters like method, URL, form, body, etc. Wait for a response and then maybe have an assertion on the response. Also, if the request requires uh, multi part form data, um, Jason H and I have worked uh, troubleshooted with this one quite a bit, but this method, this custom method, form underscore request, um, does a really good job if you know the URL and you send something in a form data um, format. So form data is an object type uh, in, in JavaScript. So um, if you want some examples of that, there are some examples of that in, uh, in the currently existing methods, particularly with creating encounters and, and submitting encounters and things like that. Uh, sci dot fixture we've already talked about, and you'll you'll see a couple ex of examples of sci dot fixture being used. Okay, here's here's an example of one. Sci dot go has come in handy. If I want to go back a page, um, you can just do sci dot go and then back. Um, I've already talked about it dot skip, so that'll that'll skip this test. Um, obviously, you don't want the, that to uh, be a feature of your tests. Once your tests are mature, you don't want to skip them. So I uh, actually wrote little scripts that uh, include change all tests to run and change all tests to skip dot shell. So if we just run change all tests to run, okay, we can see that it visits every single one of these spec files and hopefully you'll see it's gotten rid of all the it.skips here, which it has. Okay, Then I can go ahead and change them back by running change all test to skip. Okay, and you'll see all the skips are here. Okay, so that was just a really easy way instead of doing a search and replace of it um, because sci.visit ends in it. So I, I was finding some bugs there. So I just wrote a script to help make it easier for you guys. Um, another one that's really helpful for me is doing it.only. So it.only, if you run this particular file, that's the only test it's going to run. Oh. Okay, every once in a while, if you get some kind of element in the DOM that's hidden that you need access to, that you need to force click or force type into, um, you can send this optional parameter to a lot of these methods in Cypress. Um, so cypress.click, you can do a force true, and that way even if the element is not visible on the DOM, it'll actually go ahead and click it. And similarly, uh, you can force type into um, maybe an input or something like that element. Um, just a heads up that Cypress doesn't really seem to be handling manual form submission, which is to say if you're using the UI to submit all of these uh, or to type in all of these inputs and then hitting submit the submit button on the form. So in another project that I've been working on, the form submission seems to be working just fine, but for some reason 
with Wildbug for a reason I haven't really been able to figure out. It just doesn't really play well with form submission. And this is something that Jason H has helped me out with. And we've realized that the best path forward seems to be doing the side request, side out requests, which is good anyway, right? Because side out requests actually speeds up our tests um, by not having to build up so much state in the UI. And that's all I wanted to talk about with this one. Um, let me know if there are any lingering questions or uh, if there's something that's not super clear, and I'll go ahead and add it to these videos. Thanks a lot.